How's it going guys? Welcome back to The Buff Nerd. If you're a new watcher, welcome. I hope you enjoyed the content. Feel free to uh, leave a like. If you're a returning watcher and you're not yet subscribed, please subscribe to the channel uh, just to show some support and see, you know, all the cool stuff that I got going on that I make videos about. Also, Happy New Year. Um, are you bringing in the new year, you know, with the game plan? Do you got plans to obtain some sort of certification? Or you're planning on retaking any kind of test that you may have failed? Or are you just trying to find a sense of direction to figure out, you know, how to break into uh, the IT industry? If so, leave a comment in the section below and tell me what you got going on. But outside of that, what's new? I will tell you what is new. So as uh, a lot of you guys know, at the beginning of the month, uh, or the beginning of December last month, I got a new job. Um, I got a new role as a wireless network admin. But wait a second, Brendan. I thought you were just a network engineer. Why would you take a step back to become an admin? Sounds crazy, right? Let me tell you the reasons why. Now, the role that I obtained uh, back in May of last year as a network engineer uh, was great. It was a very specific job with very specific tasks, focusing mainly on BGP, uh, OSPF tunnels, and multicast routing. Multicast routing is a networking method uh, when it comes to distributing uh, traffic from one source to many. Meaning essentially that um, there is multicast traffic on the network that's being streamed across the network and anyone who needs this information can pop in or peer in and um, get access to it and chime in. This kind of stuff usually is done with like video conferences or you know uh, getting full motion video capture from uh, IP cameras or anything along those lines or stuff along those lines. Now when I was on this team there were a couple of different teams that I worked alongside. As you guys know, me, I was considered a tier two network engineer and uh, we were the first point of contact in case things go south, uh, if there's some sort of issue with the uh, multicast traffic, uh, we will be the first ones, uh, uh, the, the customer will reach out to uh, the team that can contact us and they would contact us and we would do our thing. Uh, we worked alongside tier three engineers. Uh, these are like our bigger brothers and they uh, basically gave us the green light when it came to making certain configuration changes and things along those lines. And then there was the TNS team. Uh, a TNS team was kind of like the, the real engineers in my opinion. They were out in the data center, in the data closets, making changes, you know, checking out circuits and all kinds of cool stuff. They were the down and dirty guys, in my opinion, which essentially is kind of the stuff that I wanted to do, um, or at least I thought I'd be doing as a network engineer. But unfortunately, when it came to this tier two role, yes, I did have the privileges to execute certain commands and uh, you know, input certain things and take things away. Long story short, I did have those permissions. However, it was very, very limited, and I had to go through um, a couple of different channels before I was even able to do those things. Since we were at the first point of contact, we did all the very simple troubleshooting. Um, we would check certain commands. We would check to see if the multicast traffic was streaming properly, if it was hitting the proper devices that it was supposed to hit, and everything along those lines. You know, if something needed to be fixed, uh, we would have to go through a lot of steps before actually having to fix it. Since we were the first point of contact and, you know, we were the guys that were on the horn first and doing what is called shift work, being there and making sure that someone's present, if things go south, it kind of felt more like a help desk role uh, when it came to that specific part of the job. So instead of saying it's tier two, I will call it, and most people will probably call it tier one and a half or tier two and one fourths. Anyways, the tasks were very clear and cut and the job was very specific. So, you know, dancing outside of that line was something that I wasn't doing very uh, too, too often. Also, there was projects that the different teams were working on, like implementing certain softwares and certain, you know, programs and protocols. And we could potentially get the chance to uh, work on some of that stuff. But like I said, since it was shift work, um, dancing outside of that line without getting too far away from your desk was something that was very hard to do. Um, so yeah, you would be able to help out with certain things, but at the same time, if you're not at your desk, when you know a call comes through, you know everything can catch on fire and everybody will be pointing the finger at you. So you know the opportunity for growth wasn't exactly there. I mean, it, it was, but it was really hard to actually grow. Also, when I was in this role, um, I wasn't on a shift where there was a lot of action. You know, I was on the midnight shift, and. Uh, all the action at this particular job happens in the, in the morning, on the day shift. 
you know, that's when all the calls are being made, that's when everybody's in office, that's when everybody's trying to figure out how to resolve certain problems. And me being on nights, um, I really didn't have a lot going on, you know. I would just be sitting at my desk waiting for a call to come in, you know, I usually get a lot of studying done. And I would study, study, cram, and all that good stuff. And you know, also, I was trying to figure out exactly which direction I wanted to go when it came to uh, getting the CCMP concentration. Some of you guys know, I just passed the CCMP uh, Enterprise Core exam last August, and I've been trying to figure out what direction I wanna go. You know, I made a couple of videos talking about going towards security and getting some Palo Alto firewall certifications. I'll link those up top if you wanna go check those out. Also, I was considering going wireless. So when I was on midnights, I was looking into these things, doing research, you know, trying to get a lay of the land and, you know, just waiting on calls. And I would go days sometimes without getting phone calls. And one, one time that turned into a whole week, a whole week without getting any phone calls. And to be completely honest, um, that kind of made me a little insecure. <laughs> uh, what I mean by that is, you know, I noticed that my skills as a network administrator and a network engineer were starting to atrophy. Um, I was forgetting very simple things uh, when it came to troubleshooting networks, when it came to just being knowledgeable, when it comes to what could potentially be wrong when it comes to uh, networks and things along those lines. And that really made me question the direction that I was going as a network engineer with this particular role. As you guys know, my initial goal was to become a network engineer. Great, we achieved that. Now that I'm there, you know, I've been doing a lot of thinking, trying to figure out what's next, you know, what it, what is it that I want to do now? And, you know, what I've the, the, conclu the conclusion that I came to was that um, what I need now is proficiency. You know, one of the things I don't want to do is be a network engineer, but, you know, not actually be doing network engineering things and accumulating time as a network engineer. So when that next role comes, that's, you know, a higher tier, and they're like, oh, well, what are some of the things you did as a network engineer for one year or two years or however many years? And I'm like, I sat at a desk and answered phones and checked connectivity to certain things once a week. They're gonna look at that, they're gonna look at my resume and be like, yeah, he's a paper tiger, get him out of here. And that's one thing that I wanted to avoid. So with those things in mind, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna get on the job market and see what I can find. So I got on the job market and um, I wasn't exactly sure the kind of role I was looking for next. And like I told you guys, you know, I was trying to figure out exactly what concentration I wanted to focus on when it came to the CCMP. Um, there's about five, uh, yeah, there's about five different concentrations that you can focus on and specialize in. Uh, one being advanced routing, uh, one being network design, one being wireless design, the other being wireless implementation. Uh, I think SD-WAN is one of them and automation, so there's six. But um, yeah, so while looking for jobs, I was also trying to figure out what concentration I was gonna focus on. And you know, after doing some digging and all this other stuff, and putting myself back out there as far as being on the job market, I got reached out to uh, for this role, which was as a wireless network admin. And so at first I was like, eh, I'm not really trying to you know, go back to being an admin, but of course, you know, let's do the interview and let's see how it is and let's see, let's see um, what this role entails. Because as I told you guys before in a video prior, um, yeah, I was a network engineer last year, but I had an admin job before this network engineering job where I was doing engineer work. I was in the IDFs, I was in the data centers, and I was looking at all the things and touching all the things. And so, you know, I thought, even though this says it's an admin role, you know, let's do the interview and see if it's actually an admin role or if it's kind of an engineering role. So I do the interview and, you know, I did fairly well. and. Uh, the project manager at this particular company was like, yeah, you know, I, I noticed that you had just got this job as a network engineer six months prior. You know, how can I be sure that, you know, if I were to hire you, that you wouldn't just pop smoke in another six months? And so I had to explain to him that um, this job as a network engineer, uh, that was my goal as far as my career is concerned. So as an admin, you know, once I got the chance to be a network engineer, I flew to coop because I was like, okay, this is the end all be all. This is my dream job. This is what I've been studying so hard for. This is what I want to be. And so that's the only reason why I left that job so early in order to try and become a network engineer. And he understood. He was like, oh man. He's like, okay, well, that makes sense, you know? And it's nice that you, you know, decided to go for your goals and all that. And I was like, yeah, 
one thing that I have to, uh, th this is what I said to him. I said, one thing that I um, would need from you guys, if you do take the chance and decide to bring me on, I would have to know that there is going to be growth. You know, I have to know that I'm not going to be stagnant and doing the same thing, the, the same thing or nothing at all when it comes to actually doing work. You know, I don't want to have to, you know, wait days or weeks for calls. You know, I don't want to have to be confined to a desk where I can't learn and I can't cross train with different teams so that I can become more proficient. You know, my goal now is to be proficient. And, you know, that, you know, set off a light bulb in his head, you know, that got him real excited. Remember how I told you guys, you know, when you show excitement, you show exuberance, it usually works in your favor. So he was like, you know what? I can guarantee you all those things. You won't be confined. You'll be able to cross train. You'll get your hands on all the good stuff. And uh, just, you know, make sure that you stick with us as long as you can. And I was like, sounds good. So he got me an offer letter. And compensation, amazing. Compensation still in the ballpark of what I was making as a network engineer, which is dope. And, you know, they uh, decided to bring me on in December of last year. So now I am officially a wireless network administrator, which is dope. Um, you know, I'm getting real comfortable with this role as a wireless network admin, doing some real cool things. Um, I'm working with uh, Cisco Prime when it comes to maintaining the wireless network. Um, also working with Ekenhow, which is a uh, platform used by most wireless engineers to do uh, site surveys, predictive site surveys, uh, active and passive site surveys. That's basically where you walk around a building that's going to get wireless uh get a wireless environment or already have one but they're having issues and you check to see how the radio frequencies uh, are working in those areas you know so that you can come up with uh, effective or efficient design or you can you know figure out whatever issue is happening when it comes to that particular environment real cool stuff um, so I'm getting trained up on all that right now and I'm gonna make a video talking about how I prepped for this wireless uh, network admin role real good stuff because like you guys know I wasn't a wireless network admin before this, so of course I had to do my homework and get geared up in order to, to ace the interview. Moral of the story is, sometimes great things and great opportunities don't exactly align with your goals. Now that doesn't mean that you made a bad decision, that doesn't mean that you have to settle for the decisions that you've made. Uh, as always, it means that you have to assess the situation, take a step back, you know, analyze and reassess your goals and potentially take a step in a different direction. You know, sometimes it happens. Uh, you know, all that glitters isn't gold and all roads don't all lead to the promised land. Some roads leads into brick walls or some roads lead into caves and abysses where you become comfortable and stagnant. <laughs> Anyways, uh, but yeah, um, that's one thing that I wanted to emphasize when it came to this particular video that uh, although I uh, was a network engineer, in order to align myself with uh, uh, my change in goals, I had to take a step back, you know, survey the area, and then move in a different direction. And I want to emphasize that you guys shouldn't be scared to make those kind of decisions. I'm going to be coming out with a couple of videos over the course of the next week or two. And uh, like I said, one is going to be talking about how I landed the network admin role, or the, the wireless network admin role. Another is going to uh, likely be talking about not being afraid to change your goals um, not getting too comfortable, um, being wise when it comes to the direction that you're going in and things along those lines. So stay tuned. Outside of that, that's all I got for you guys this time. So as always, stay safe, stay positive, network. Wait, I always lose track of this. Let's try that again. As always, stay safe, stay positive, learn everything, network, and avoid hernias while getting the gains. <laughs>